is the Sportsmax Zone and we're continuing with cricket. Jamaican fans have continued to express disappointment that the country did not bid to host games at the 2024 T20 World Cup being jointly held in the Caribbean and the United States. The list of hosts for the men's T20 World Cup slated for June next year was announced last Thursday and Jamaica's exclusion sparked major discussion about government's support or lack thereof for cricket. Now, joining us to discuss this matter is marketing consultant Carole uh, Beckford. Uh, Carole, um, we know that you have a lot of expertise in, in this area, and um, it's been a very topical issue, not only in Jamaica, but right throughout the Caribbean. Of course, a lot of Caribbean countries celebrating that they are hosting. It's the other side of the coin for the Jamaicans who, who are disappointed. Um, how did that news grab you that the Jamaican uh, aggregation didn't put it in a bid for this uh, T20 hosting? I think we all are disappointed, but from my perspective, because I worked at Jampro when we last hosted World Cup in 2007, that we paid some serious money and invested in what was the legacy program at the time, which morphed into the major events attraction program, which spoke to, or speaks to, because it's still there, um, how to host subsequent events, what kind of businesses to do, and so on. So we have a whole major events attraction program, which has shifted between Jampro and the Jamaica Tourist Board because it is primarily to bring more people here and to create kind of events that would supplement, complement all the other things. But it was around the, the World Cup. Australia is pretty good at le building legacy programs and they would have gone to Montreal and after all the Olympics and Cricket World Cup 2007. But to fast forward to this is that we knew way ahead of time that the World Cup, Cricket World Cup was coming back. Um, we missed out, I think, in 2010 because of the shortened um, version of it. But we have hosted major events since then. And Sabina Park in particular, one of the most established grounds across the cricketing world. I mean, we haven't hosted cricket here for probably three good years. And I mean, I mean it's astounding that Jamaica didn't make a, make a, a, a bid to host any of the events. Mm. Of course, the sports minister in Jamaica, Olivia Babsa Grange, has had a quick response to the negative comments coming out of this and suggesting that the cost benefits didn't match the investment. And of course, you'd probably reflect on 2007, the Cricket World Cup staged in the Caribbean, uh, where the Jamaica leg was reported to have lost um, a lot of money. And uh, reflecting on that, I guess that would have helped to influence the decision the government made in, in not taking this offer up? Well, the last World Cup to probably would have gotten some kind of direct um, increase probably was the one in South Africa. But what has happened over the years, Jamaica was then designated a sport tourism destination. So we're a land that we create athletes and we're a land that hosts athletes and host events. So a lot of the people that have come here, which includes sport tourists that are now number somewhere between three and four of the highest spending tourists in the world. They come here for different reasons. So ha having lost on that two-week event or whatever time frame it was, over the years we have seen more sport tourists coming to Jamaica. And the Jamaica Tourist Board does have the research. And, you know, what I find strange is that Minister Bartlett is now announcing that he's going after Asian Canadian market. They're not coming here to play, to play drops or jacks. They're coming here to watch cricket and do other things. And it is... First of all, it is offensive that our Minister of Sports could actually say that. And the stakeholders, who did she meet with? The Talawas has a full um, economic assessment of what benefit it is to each country and to Jamaica. And they release that information. CPL has come. And I'm saying, all right, we could have hosted CPL last year and test the water. Since we know that World Cup, we can't have an event like that. Yeah. When Jamaicans are playing cricket and trying to read somewhere, but part of it is playing at home. And so right now, none of our Jamaican cricketers play at home. They come back and they play for the clubs, but there's no international event. I mean, I could get into... It, cricket is the second most watched sport in the world. We know where the cricket viewership is from. They actually like Jamaica, and it is an explosion of our cuisine and all of that stuff. So the economic... To host the actual event for the days, it is expensive. Let me just tell you that. But government facilitate. So we could invite corporate to support. We could re reinvigorate the people to come back to, to the boxes. People would pay to come. And I mean, it's, it's, I, I, I'm, disappointment is not even a word. But I think it's going to cost us for years to come because 
track and field, despite how well we do in the world, does not attract the same level of investment. It has to be cricket and football, and they had years to plan. What is the role of the ESTIF? What is the role of Chase? The Ministries of Sport and Tourism. Who did she meet with? What did they say? It can't be, we can't just accept this. Carol, and now I'm Trini. I live here, so I consider myself an honorary Jamaican. That's just my personal thing. But from the rest of the Caribbean, the rest of the world looking on, and every day the headline says, no cricket will be hosted in Jamaica, uh, no CPL, no T20, nothing is coming up. One of the things I have really, really felt unfortunate since I've been living here, my sister hasn't played a match. She plays for West Indies Women. Mm, I know who and, your sister is. And I've been looking forward to that. So even as the average Caribbean person looking on, wondering what's happening in Jamaica, how does that affect brand Jamaica? It's damaging the brand. Um, we have research that says $4 billion Four and a half billion people have access to Jamaica on, for a second flight. So the flights coming here is a bit cheaper and you get here faster. So we have, Lance, we have research that could stone dog. And I'm saying boost the services of the SDF to have proper marketing, planning, and research people. So here it is now, we're not going to get no cricket. But to move forward, Let's just find a solution. So you boost the services of the SDF. I've written about it over and over. We need to wrap up Chase, give back culture, health, and education to where they belong, and form a proper sport agency that looks from now until 2032 when we have a couple of Olympics and, sing and host games within. We're also at risk to lose our status. I think in track and field for one of the world challenge meets if we don't have like the Jamaica Invitational. Yes. So there are a number of other things and I'm saying if we have a sport ministry, let's look at how we can attract investment and give incentives. So if somebody invests $30 million in an infrastructure, for example, there's a 30% ret return. Trinidad has done some research and we just need to put the Jamaican figures in there and see how it can work. We can't have our athletes doing so well. The girls in, in Canada now, we reach top 16. We never even have a proper welcome party for the girls. So it's like we're just sitting back and say, all right, the girls are going to run, they're going to play football, the guys are playing cricket. And so what, what do we do? If just lock it down then, if we're not going to do this, let's just lock it down. Mm -hmm. What is the point? And that is what upsets me. It's not even about that we're not getting to host. But it's the excuses that they're giving to us. And make it look like Chris Darren is here. Michael Hall has successfully run CPL for 10 years. Why not get Michael to plan this thing? And I'm very upset about that, that the people who have the expertise are not being used. And that is the problem. Because the stakeholders who the minister have suggested she has met with, I don't know who they are because I called a couple of them and they have said they have not met. So who has she spoken to? And I'm saying, if you say you don't want to host it, say that, but don't make excuses. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Carol. Is there any explanation on the part of the government slash the Minister of Sport that would have sufficed for why they are not or why they did not bid to host this event from your standpoint? Um, I'm not too sure because what has happened now, because we're doing in the, the investigations, we found out that the time frames, they're, they're not matching up to the information that they're giving us. I mean. It's as simple as that. So the excuse is, and it can't be just easy for us to just say, all right, we're going to give money to development of cricket. It has to be a carefully planned out strategy. The Vision 2030 has a whole sport policy. We have a thing that we say how to bid, when to bid, what we bid for, what are the conditions, in addition to the fact that Cricket West Indies has its rules and it set it, and it goes to the government. The government does things with duty at the thing. So they don't, have to, they don't even have to give us money, you know. If they said, let me use a company. If, if Ricardo Chambers and company corporation said they're going to donate $40 million, mm -hmm. the government, we can go to the government and say, listen, he's putting up money for this. He's building new stands. He's doing that, giving back 30% of our money. And it makes something worthy. So, so you facilitate. Mm -hmm. And that is what countries that have sport as as a comparative and competitive advantage do. And it is a disservice to our athletes who continue to perform so well globally and not being able to have a destination that has venues that are sitting there idly because they're underutilized and that's a whole other problem.
We're going to have to refurbish every single sporting venue in this country. Well, they're used for parties. Yeah, and, and even Sabina But that's Park. not sufficient, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, that's what I want to say. It's being used for the wrong things. Well, I, I don't know about wrong things um, because they are multifaceted right, yeah. venues. And so I think that's fine if you are having parties at them. Timing, you can discuss um, of when you have these parties. Um, but I wanted to get from Carol because you spoke about um, the, the, the timing um, as it has been presented to us, not matching. Um, can you explain that a little bit more for us? Um, all right. So the... the there was a expression of interest in the government terms. So something came out, a terms of reference. They came to all the countries. I think Courtney Francis, in, a, in another interview, suggested that the papers came here in April, which was right after the first, the first week of the new financial year in government. But it was explained from last year that cricket is coming to the Americas. Yes. When they sat down in October to do the estimates of expenditure, that should have been something that is clear that they're going to put on the thing. And it's also a pre-Olympic year. Remember, you know, we're going four-year and two-year cycles. So the $1.16 billion that is allocated for sports um, in the last estimates of expenditure, which is not an Olympic year, could have been boosted a little and you shift it around. I mean, regrettably, and the information is out there, by the way, people. You can Google it. You can go on SDF website, the Ministry of Finance website, and all of these things are there. I've only been able to put the information together because I've worked in the business. And so I'm saying, moving forward, I complain enough, so moving forward, we have, we have opportunities to host whole heap of things. Bring India, bring Australia, carry Australia netball and start doing things. So the people that play and prepare get an opportunity to have international thing. The same Canadians and Asians that we're going after, cricket has a, Canada has a G7 thing up there, a Chris Gale go endorse and something. Hundreds of thousands of people going to Canada to watch cricket. Can you imagine Long, is Long Island building a whole new stadium? Yes. And the other thing is, one more thing. Mm. We have bilaterals with industrialized companies that can assist us, technical assistance. Yeah. So if you say you're building a stadium, the seeds we got from Sabina Park came from Atlanta in 1996. Mm. So we can get seed from Atlanta. We can get... Um, ceiling from Germany. <laughs> we can do something, but nobody is sitting down and planning lands, and that is what upsets me. Yes. And there are people here with expertise. Call uh, Chris, I'm uh, calling your name. Chris, um, Michael Hall, uh, Paul Wright, all, uh, Dave Cameron is here. I mean, for crying out loud. So, so, so let me see if I'm understanding you correctly, Carol. So the major issue for you is not necessarily that we are not um, or we did not bid to host this event, but there does not seem to have been a planning process no. um, leading up to when um, the bidding process opened, as, as far as I understand it, earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, and so when the process was opened, it almost caught the government by surprise. And that is your disappointment, yeah. that it almost it seems when you to hear have the, caught them by surprise. And when you hear the JC talk, they said they did what they should have done. Cricket wrestling is also which is Which is what? No, they... Well, what should they have done? They presented their documentation based on... When? Previous... No, they got it. The government called them, whoever it came to in the government, at the office of the Prime Minister. Mm. Courtney France is on air saying this. I'm not making up the stories. And he said he... That's Courtney Francis of Courtney, the Jamaica Cricket Association. Cricket Association. Yeah. I would have met initially with the minister, but somewhere something fell down. So again, put we, the absence of the National Sports Council, which is another bugbear that has not met since 2016. Had we had a National Sports Council, these things couldn't happen because that is where those things work. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just about football, cricket, netball, basketball. It would have been a broad brush of what sports development looks like in Jamaica in terms of high school, club, and international, what we can host, what, how we send away people and all that kind of a thing. This industry has done tremendously well for Jamaica. We're going to our 20th Olympics next year as a small country. Yeah. I, I, want, to, I want to make this point, right? Well, well, really put the question to you um, because a lot has been made about the fact that cricket is suffering um, in Jamaica because we've not seen CPL since 2019. Um, the last time the West Indies were here was February last year, I think it was. Um, 
no, we will not have World Cup matches in 2024. But I also seem to remember not so long ago, there was an opportunity to host a World Under-20 Championships in track and field. Um, and at the time, the government essentially said, well, we don't have the money um, to get that done at this time. Um, could it just be that we are an extremely poor state with a number of not just sports, right? Because one of the things, when you look across the rest of the Caribbean, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Carol, when you look at the rest of the Caribbean, no other Caribbean country has the depth in quality across various sports at a world-class level that Jamaica has. And so the government of Jamaica, when it comes to sports, has to spend a lot on a lot more um, disciplines, um, to put it that way. Um, and could it just be that they don't have enough money? Um, we're not asking, all right, let me state clearly, we're not asking the government to fund sports fully. Make it attractive for people to invest. Yeah. And that's what... A business model. It's a business model. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the recommendations have been put out. 10 million and under certain levels of incentive. 10 to 20, 11 to 20 and, and upwards. But I'm saying, let's put it together. We, we just came out of COVID or we're coming out of COVID. Mm -hmm. The children who are 5 to 11 will have, because of lack of activity, and I'm going back because I want to make the point, will have issues with obesity, NCDs, and so on, because we're not being active enough. And so we are, we are reducing the opportunity for engaging and competitive physical activity by not hosting what is the sense champs isn't it or jamaica premier league isn't it you, you think not hosting cricket does all of that Carol? yes because what <laughs> e it even means, with all the other sports no the, the young man who went to school with fabian allen him can't jump on a bus because send kids go watch fabian he want to watch him in sabina park Archelani, that is how you build but, communities. But I, think, I, I, I think, understand that, but what I'm trying to get to is, do you think by not hosting matches in the Cricket World Cup, it extends all the, the way thing. to say that it, 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 it it's part and parcel it of what we do? A lot of the and we have been that you just suggested. We had cricket at Sabana Park in 1928. We know in 2023, mm -hmm. what is it that's stopping us? And I'm saying we have successive governments have not been responsible enough to put an incentive package together. Mm -hmm. And so we are here now in 2023. We have three more Olympics, probably in my lifetime, left to go. I'm saying put things in place. Mm -hmm. I've made the recommendations, boost Chase, boost SDF, close down Chase, reorganize in sports and SDC, and let's build a proper sport industry. And every time yeah. something like this happens, we have the conversation yeah. Yeah. and we talk about it for, for, for nine days and yeah. it stops. But this is not going to stop. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that you just said successive governments have, have, have missed the ball or dropped the ball because up to this point, people would have thought that you are bashing the current government. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not. No, no, yeah. no. Everybody, listen. Yes. My three books have spanned from 2006 to now. Yes. My blogs have been... I've, I'm probably one of the earlier sports bloggers. You can go back and check. I've been cussing everybody. <laughs> and them know, but I have solutions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I've gone to yeah. other countries yeah. and implemented. Okay. I lived in Antigua for four years. Yes. Right. And we have used the service <laughs> stadium. We use it for party to Michelle and Conscience and all of them come down there. Yeah. Yeah. But it also hosts cricket. Yeah. We even and use and football. And football and yeah. we even yeah. use I, I think, ARG. I think, I think that's where Ricardo was going earlier on because I think the point he was trying to make and it fits in well with what you're saying now because you've traveled throughout the Caribbean that a lot of other Caribbean countries and like government investment and so on see cricket as a bigger priority. I'm just saying cricket, cricket since this is a yes. cricket discussion. Not sport. Yeah, cricket, cricket as as the biggest opportunity or biggest platform for them to invest in sport, whereas Jamaica, it might not be so, which is the point Ricardo was and making And I could say that for Trinidad for one. No, but one, I was in Grenada a couple of times, and when we're leaving out of Grenada Stadium, the, I think it's Kirana James Stadium. Yes. yes. After cricket, is Barry doing sound check yeah. but, but, for but, but, a concert but, the other night? But, so. but, but here's the thing, though, Carol. In Grenada, and Grenada maybe is not even the best example because they've had a lot of investment in both cricket and track and field. 
but you think about Barbados where they've had great investment in cricket but not the same for track and field and not the same for other sports in Trinidad and Tobago. They have road in, tennis in... though that <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people gather and then you used to listen to Lance sing at nights. So, <laughs> so, Jamaica, you know so, I know so, this thing, so, right? So, so here, here is it, Jamaica, for example, right? And, and by the way, let me just state clearly, I am not defending anybody here. No yeah. government, no private sector company. Yeah. I am defending nobody at all. I'm just trying to get as good an understanding as is possible. So, for example, um, well, I was going to say there are two major track and field meets in this country yearly, but in truth, it's really only one now because <laughs> the Jamaica Invitational has, has not gone, happened right. for quite some time. Mm. Um, one, of the, one of the things I would like to see, right, Carol, Lance and Mariah, is how much money governments across the Caribbean spend on sport. Mm. And I would like to see how that compares for Jamaica um, and the rest of the Caribbean, because yeah. I think that would give us a better indication. Um, because if, for example, Jamaica is spending similarly to the rest of the Caribbean, um, but they are spending across more sporting events, then I don't know how no, much but, you no, can but the, kill the them. advantage cricket has, and CPL, you see McMillan dig up the things. <laughs> um, Talawas have invested over the years... 1.0 million in 2014, and it has gone up to 2.2 into Jamaica. And then, and so, and that is just Talawas, right? So you're looking. But, but how do we know that there aren't better investments, though? And I don't know, you know, but I'm asking that question. How do we know that we're a there sporting are not nation? Better investments. We have assets. Yeah. From All right, we, we, we have a lot more to talk about, Carol. Your, your segment should have ended now. But we're going to take a quick break and come back just for okay. a few minutes to give you an opportunity oh to, 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 to make your point even stronger than you have so far. <laughs> so it's break time. Back with more after this on the Sportsman Zone. Yeah, welcome back to the Sports Mag Zone. We're speaking with uh, marketing consultant Carol Beckford, and we are discussing um, no World Cup cricket at Sabina Park for the 2024 um, T20 tournament. And uh, the Minister of Sport in Jamaica, Olivia Bamsey Grange, released a statement at the weekend. Let's have a look at that. At the end of our consultations with stakeholders, it was agreed that Jamaica should prioritize investing in developing cricket from the grassroots to the high performance levels over putting in a formal bid. It was not an easy decision, and I very much understand and share the disappointment of fans who wanted to see T20 World Cup games being played in Jamaica. However, I could not just follow my heart. As a responsible minister, I am obliged to look beyond immediate gratification to sustainable sport development that will yield immeasurable rewards at all levels in Jamaica. I had to pay attention to the cost-benefit analysis, especially in a circumstance of limited resources. In order to play, up, to play our part in hopefully, in the not-too-distant future, fixing West Indies cricket, we will prioritize investment in the local game. In this regard, and further to discussion with the Minister of Finance, I announced today that the government will invest Jamaican 100 million in the development of youth cricket and cricket in schools over the next five years. This is in addition to our ambitious plan for the rehabilitation and development of Jamaica's sports infrastructure. So that's it from the Minister of Sport in Jamaica, the Honorable Olivia Bamsey Grange. Carol Beckford is still with us. Um, any quick response to what you just saw, Carol? No, I think the investment in, in high school sports, and in this case, cricket, is always welcome. Um, and, and that even needs its own cost-benefit analysis. One, I think we, we, have, we have divided ourselves. So we have 24 clubs. We don't have enough talent to, to do that. So play 10 and get everybody. So that's a whole other thing. But I'm saying, all right, if we're going to have that discussion, it must, we must sit down with the, with the sports people 
and, and plan out what we have. When I was volleyball president 22 years ago, young man, <laughs> I, I, I sat... I, I was when, in primary school. When I, when I submitted my development plan to the SDF, yes. we sat with the people there, and we had to present. So we have to say, over the next four years, what we're going to do, what we're going to host, what we're going to go to, how many athletes, how many schools, and so on. And we had to do that. That don't happen anymore. And so I know for a fact it don't happen anymore. And I'm saying something like cricket. We're not talking, and I'm not disrespecting no sport. We're not talking about bocce yeah. or curling. We're talking about cricket. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying the total economic impact of cricket on Jamaica. When people come for cricket, five-day cricket, them stay 11 days. A average but, but, sport but, but, tourist, but, but, hold on, an yes. average sport tourist spend $320 a day. I've done the research. Them come for seven days and them drive go Ochi and they're adventurers. They tour. That research is sitting on somebody's desk in the tourist board and our jam pro. And I'm saying, had somebody carefully thought about this, call Michael Hall, call Chris Daring. If you don't want to call me, me could I recommend a whole heap of other people. Call Kishore Shallow. The Cricket West Indies president said I'm upset that Jamaica not even amount. Because you know what? When you look geographically, even at the flights, yeah. because of how quickly it can get here. The equipment move quick. Me used to work at Jampere Moses Film Commissioner. So on a secret matter, me yeah. know that was my job. And so I'm saying, you know, it can, is that them take me for prekay? And them not. It, it, it is appalling, Lance. And that is what upsets me now. Yeah. It better the minister did say, listen, we're not bidding. But we are going to have under 20 cricket from all across the world. Every nation that play, we're going to have them under 20. And we put them up at UAE, which costs me less. And we carry them through Kingston, carry them go down the river. And we are going to do something fantastic. Because we're not always have to be, you know. But don't make those excuses. No cost-benefit analysis never do. We know that fair fact. And if it was done, let's go. Let's debate it. So here's the thing, Carol. If the government had said... The truth is, right now, we just don't have the money to bid for this um, World T20 tournament. That, that's it, flat out. Yeah. Would you have accepted that? Oh, absolutely. Remember, you know, she also said, a statement came out to say, them asking them to extend the time. Don't forget. Well, Johnny Grave told us on this show on yeah. Friday yeah. was that the yeah. deadline was extended three times okay. in the hope that a bid would come in from oh, Jamaica. Wow. Everybody knows that Jamaica is the place. I'm telling you, we're yeah. geographically placed in the center of the world by design. It's quicker to come here. It's it easier to come here. We have whole for access. We can run to Miami and come back. And is America is the Americas, and it is in cities that have more Jamaicans than anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Why wouldn't even one match lands? No man, no, no, that is not nice. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. And there are so many things, and I know they they they, they um people from the statistics department at the, in the units are sitting down and say, okay, yeah, this is what it could have cost. we not. I'm not saying we would have earn enough to cover the cost after the days. Mm -hmm. But next year, when the Indians them start coming, now you know, hard Mr. Bartlett have to go work. India is That's it. 21 T hours away. Minister, Tourism Minister Bartlett. Minister Bartlett. Yeah, I just want a quick comment but, but, from you but, yeah, before well, you, well, you nice. continue, though, about the 100 million Jamaican dollars um, that the government is saying that will be pumped into schools over the next five years. That's right. approximately US 645,000. Does that grab you as something of impact? Um, it, it can. And again, what are the conditions for the implementation? Is, is it strictly in education? What aspect? In other words, where's the plan for it? Just yeah. to say we're going to get $100 million means nothing to, to me in this state. What is it going to do? How is it going to impact? Are you going to support the efforts of our grades to help Chris Gale, for example, to increase um, what he's doing at Lucas? And this thing, um, Preston, down at Kensington, are you going to fix the grounds? The other thing we do, you know, we don't have no good venues, you know. Mm -hmm. So our athletes are still getting by on talent, which yeah. is another show. But Sabina Park is in disrepair at the moment, as far as cricket is concerned. And so is Trelawney. Well, that has been so for, for a decade. Right. Wow. So we have problems, but, you know, I, I give kudos to the athletes. They continue to represent us well. We have more Jamaicans playing cricket now 
on average than even when the grades. In other words, it's consistent. The numbers haven't really decreased. And, it's and your, funny. your research has shown that? Because the general feeling is that there's been a decline. No, there hasn't been. Okay. So we don't have as much stars. So we don't, there's only one universe, boss. But you have, you have the young boys that just come back from under 19. We have the Robert Heinz Paul. boys, Jordan Johnson, Dominic McKenzie, all of them youth. You have Fabian, Rob Shane, Rockman, Stephanie Taylor, Stephani Taylor um, um, Shadine, Shadine Martin. Martin. We have Trash Coaching. We have Gibbs Williams. Yes, as Andrew Richardson. Uh, sorry, Andrew Richardson, <laughs> forgive me. In other words, we have more Jamaicans involved in the business of cricket. No, so it is growing. And it never just starts. I was one of his coaches for media when he was uh, Andrew in under 19. Yes. We have them coaching Tamar Lambert is somewhere coaching and they all come back and I'm saying part of the model is to ensure that the event part of it mm -hmm. Remains part of the business model. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are the time team. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But we, yeah. I need to find out how she does all those things that she we, does. We, we <laughs> should invite Carol back on this show before the week is out. Would you return, Carol? She's yeah, yeah. she would spend the night. She likes the studio. <laughs> I love the studio. By the all way, right. guys, congrats on your new studio. I just Thank absolutely you. love it. Thanks. All right, great time. <laughs>